All right, this is it. First time sitting in an Aptera. Is there a way of doing this, or is it like legs first, or butt first? Okay. All right. Seamless, seamless, wow. Now take it from me, 100%, the video does not do it justice. We should probably try and ask somebody a little bit about this, and I know the perfect person, the Aptera co-CEO, Chris Anthony. Great to meet you. Mostly, I was gonna ask you about the repairability. Uh, we're trying to put QR codes on everything, so if you have a problem with any particular part, you can scan it and watch a YouTube video, download all the information on the part. We're a right to repair company, so we'll actually give you any information you need to fix your Aptera, no matter where you are in the world. Uh, if you have a problem, you need a part, we'll ship it to you within 24 hours. So we're not uh, we're not trying to hide behind a service network, and you have to come to an Aptera service agent to get your vehicle serviced. If uh, if you need a, a ball joint or uh, some suspension member, we'll send it to you, and you'll be good to go back on the roads. We're also using an open source uh, autopilot system, so supporting the open source community and think it's going to be a great fit for Aptera. It uses very, very little energy with the Kama AI system versus some of the other LiDAR systems, which are crazy in the power usage. Those Waymo vehicles use almost as much energy in their autopilot system as we use to drive at highway speeds. So. Now, is that going to be something removable or is something that's going to come in uh uh, you'll be able to add it in the plastic bucket that's by the rear view mirror. So you'll take out that plastic bucket and you'll put a new bucket up there. Over in Alberta, we get a lot of ice and whatnot, so this is never going to rust. Yeah, not powder coated, not uh, not even e coated or anything like that. It's just a grade of aluminum that doesn't uh, experience any kind of degradation in weather. Now, I was going to say with the battery, so in future, because I can see there's kind of like a cutout section here. Yep. This is, is where, this is where the battery mounts are here. Are people able to maybe upgrade to a higher capacity or? Uh... Uh, it depends, you know, you could probably go from a 25 to a 40 or a 40 to a 60, but probably not to a 100 because the 100's heavy. Uh, we got to have different suspension parts uh, and the belly pan, the cover's different. So the 250, 400, and 600 will probably all fit, uh, but the 100's a little a bit of an exception. The first probably 5,000 vehicles we build will all be 400 mile range vehicles. Now let's say, again, if you had an impact on one of the, the carbon parts, how would it work with repairability for that? Would you kind of separate these? Well, all, all of the exterior facing parts, like on the other side of the vehicle here, they're all fiberglass. So. Uh, if you get a door ding or damage this part or this part back here, uh, you know, that's repaired just like you would repair a boat or like a Corvette. Um, it's just it's just fiberglass, so you can actually replace that. If you get inside to the more structural stuff in here, uh, yeah, then it's more difficult to repair. It can be repaired if it's like minimum damage, like, you know, something cut into this and it's just a little spot. If you crumple a lot of the carbon fiber, though, you're going to replace that carbon fiber piece. You can cut out sections and replace sections, but you probably just end up with a whole new body because a whole new body for this is relatively inexpensive. You know, if you if you take front quarter damage in a vehicle, you know, that's a twelve to twenty thousand dollar fix depending on your car. So, you know, that's cheaper than the whole body structure. So we could send you the whole new body structure, and you could just put the parts from the other Aptera back, you know, on this one. So. Uh, from repairability, you know, if you get a big scratch or something in here, you can repair it. But it's really, really tough stuff. So it's not like aluminum or metal. This is so much stronger than the steel or aluminum on any car. All the production vehicles are wrapped. Uh, and wrapping's more environmentally friendly. It's easier to do. We don't have to have the CapEx to have a paint shop in our factory. So wrapping's, wrapping's the way to go. And then when you get your Aptera, uh, you can order your Aptera without the wrap. We'll send it to you. You can wrap it in red or whatever color you want. Uh, so it gives people a little bit more variety. Uh, you know, if you want to change your wrap every five years, you know, it, it's a couple thousand dollars instead of repainting your vehicle, which, you know, could be very, very expensive. So let's say something again uh, maybe happens, you need to repair it. Is that something that Aptera is going to pay for the shipping or? Uh, if it's under warranty, then Aptera will pay for it. If it's like a, an accident that you had uh, and you needed an upper suspension arm, we would ship it to you within 24 hours, but obviously your insurance or you would pay for it. Or yeah. And they are going to be insured classified as an auto cycle. It's an auto cycle or a motorcycle. So in America, you know, that saves you insurance because motorcycles insurance is a lot cheaper than automobile insurance. We also get one license plate in the rear instead of two license plates, which is nice. And because it has three wheels, you don't have to have a motorcycle's license to drive it. And because you have something over your head, you don't have to wear a helmet. Am I able to come pick it up and drive it back? Or do I have to wait for it to open up to Canada? Uh, if you have an early order, you, know, you can always uh, buy it in California and then drive it up. Yeah. Is there anything I should change on my reservation? Uh, like the address on the account, should I change that to a California no. address or no? 
right, right. And with the, the NAX uh, standard, is that actually gonna work with the supercharging? Uh, we limit it to 50 kilowatts, so even if you're even if you have a 300 kilowatt charger, it's only gonna allow 50 to pass. We're working on upgrading that, but we haven't worked on it too hard yet. <laughs> We're gonna see these on the road very soon. Order them up. Oh, that is fantastic. All right, so we are actually sitting, I can't believe I'm here right now. I'm sitting inside the Aptera. I don't know how many years I've been following this project. And to actually be in here, it's quite something. Uh, this is, oh, I've got a passenger here. Hey. It's fantastic. And the door, it just goes straight up. It's, it's very uh, insulated in here. So we're just gonna sit here. I don't know, I don't wanna rip this up. All right, I'm gonna hop out and I might come back in. Ooh, this is easy to get out. And it's safe to say the doors are pretty slick and it turns out actually quite a lot of thought went into making them. So here, here's the deal. You start with a normal door, let's say. Just the question of the door. And the door opens outward but the problem is it'll bang into the efficiency that we need from the fairing or the wheel pant on the front wheels. So then you say, well, not only does the door open outward, it's gonna bang into our thing that we need for efficiency. What if it opened upward? Okay, how does it open upward? Where are the, where's the best angle to get the door up and out of the way, get good ingress and egress, allow for the fairings to be where they need to be and the shape they need to be, and add a benefit of it's just a nice, reminder of how special and unique the vehicle is. Yeah, I was going to ask you a little bit about how the sound reverberates in size. It's a consideration. It's something we'll probably go in and, and make some more tuning on, right? right? That is actually one of the factors of the, uh, we didn't have the time, but in the Pininfarina wind tunnel, they have, they can run pure acoustic testing. So they have a, a, like an array of microphones that they can put inside the vehicle and outside and then do it under different conditions. That's a big issue for side view and rear view mirrors, exter external. Technologically, we don't need them. Legislatively, we do, but the government's always the last to know. So we're, we have to make accommodations until they change the, the law and the acceptance. Because we, we've hit a point with technology where we built, for decades, we've built vehicles around sight lines for flat pieces of glass to look rearward and sideward. It's nuts. But now we're at the point where technology just wipes that all the way. The sensor suite, everything. That's why we don't need a rear window. You don't need to look out the back. You should be looking forward. Let's have a little look underneath. Man, it's like flush. I feel like this thing could just go in the water. It's so flat underneath. This jerry rig everything's here as well. So the jacking points are below here. Uh, in a conventional vehicle, it is a four points. We have the same four points. One is here. It is not seen currently, we wrap it. Uh, in this front, same point, over there. So we have four oh, points. I see. Okay, so is it, just to confirm, it's just there? It is covered by our wrap guy. Right, so, yeah. right. And is that something that's uh, gonna have like a, a rubber? Yeah. Okay, no, right. we have the metal pieces, just like a small ball, like a studs, and that goes with our jack points. Right. That goes up. So you will have to have the stud to... Yeah. Now, when you jack it, are you going to be able to jack just one side at a time, or is it going to be both sides at one both time? Both sides is good. Yeah. Okay, so you to have to do both release sides. the rear wheel, yeah. front wheel, we can release it at a time. So you have to have a four... Two. Uh, two posts two left. Boats, yeah. Okay, yeah. right. I'm blown away. I'm a bit speechless, to be honest. I don't know if you can see, but there is some sort of a little vent here. I wonder if that's for your uh, cabin air. Yeah, so I wonder if that's the act of cooling. Um, yeah, there looks like there's some sort of an air vent coming in from underneath. This is like a jet. It looks like torques, Alan. I'm guessing maybe that'll change. Do you know what's really cool about this? They're simple parts. There's nothing too confusing going on here. Um, there's not like 50 million small little bits and pieces, which makes repairability much, much easier. So this one, obviously, this has been painted. Um, it is going to be wrapped, so you could actually order it with nothing on it. I wonder, I wonder what the colour would look like, to be honest. I think it's kind of like a dark grey. Oh cool, look. There's a little 12 volt outlet. And you've got some tie downs, so you could actually go to uh, Ikea. You could fit in a whole dining uh, table. I mean, this is, this is properly big. Luckily, on day two, I managed to find Steve Fambro, who's the other co-CEO of Aptera. Okay, I am here with Steve Fambro, uh, who is the CEO of uh, Aptera. You did mention you had a uh, 
Honda Insight as well. Was there any inspiration from that uh, in making this? Or Well, the Honda Insight taught me that a uh, two-seater vehicle could be practical and uh, that efficiency gives extraordinary results. You know, I was able to get on average 50 miles per gallon with the Insight. And uh, of course, as you know, the inside is aluminum. It's very lightweight, of course, very low drag. So I had already started the company before I bought it. But when I'd started the company and I needed a new car, I said, you know, I, I'm see, this is the first after we're talking about. Um, I, I have to be very careful what vehicle I choose, you know, because I have an image to maintain. Uh, and I had a pickup truck at the time, so I sold the pickup truck and I bought the inside. For me, the pickup truck was... Uh, it's like any you know, cars are like avatars for people. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll buy chopped wood or I'll haul stuff in it, and I never did. Yeah. And, um, and when I got the Insight, it, you know, I was flying a lot at the time, getting my pilot's license, and it felt very natural. It's like, okay, this makes sense. Low drag, efficient. This is like an airplane. What I'm hoping that people will take from the Aptera, not just customers but others who see it, is that they can, they can see that. Powering every journey by the sun is feasible. It's not only feasible, it's practical, it's sexy, uh, it's, it saves money. In 10 years, it'll save as much money in fuel savings, um, like enough to buy another car, you know? So I think our goal is to show people that efficiency uh, is enables all kinds of things like making every journey power by the sun. How is it going to work with the, the QR codes and the videos um, for people to follow maybe at home if they have to do any warranty work? Well, for warranty work we want that to be done by a trusted partner and we don't expect anyone to have to lift a finger uh, to take care of anything that's under warranty. So we're still working to finalize you know, that partnership uh, with one of, let's say, several companies. Uh, who do vehicle service, third-party service, and mobile service, but we would bend over backwards to make sure that they have all the information, access to engineers, access to CAD, everything, uh, to solve problems and replace things. For somebody like me who's in a little town called Crossfield, there aren't too many technicians. Would that be something I would be able to still obtain? or? Uh... It, I would say in general, yes but there's just gonna be maybe some limitations around high voltage things. So you're gonna start with a 400 mile range. Are you gonna to go to another battery size later? Or, because uh, I understand those are for the foundation, uh, the first ones. I, I think that depends on what becomes available to do R&D with. You know, technology's changing all the time. We, we try and keep a, um, a dividing line between what we're thinking about the future versus what we're trying to make in mass production because you don't want design and release engineers to be they'll never stop designing, you know, if they're always trying to include the latest technology. So they kind of have to be two parallel paths, but our plan is to certainly continue to remain abreast of what those technologies are, what's available to us. Reading about technology is one thing, having it available for samples or even low volume production is another, but um, that's, I think that's how we manage that. If I had a puncture in the rear tire, mm. how would I change the tire? I don't think there's any plan for a spare. We've already sourced a, like a tire service repair kit, like many EVs. My wife's Volvo has uh, one of these. It has, comes with like a pump and some slime and stuff like that. So those are pretty standard. We've already sourced that kit. We can put that in there. But I think for the most part, we're gonna encourage uh, tow trucks for many kind of failures, just out of an abundance of caution. You know, we, we have to be very careful about suggesting that people uh, open up the access on the rear wheel on the side of the road and changing that or doing that. Maybe it's just safer if they get on a tow truck and go somewhere. As a Canadian reservation holder, if I picked up in California and did my import stuff myself, would that still keep me kind of as one of the first people or do I have to change, maybe put a U.S. address on the... Uh... Oh, I don't, I don't think that should be an impediment. I think we should be able to accommodate that. I, I, if it is an impediment, let me know, because I, I won't stand for it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And after a long day, it's finally time to head over to Aptera's CES after party. It's crazy how much just happened in two days, but it's the type of thing, you know, where if you slow down a little bit, you're going to miss it all. But it really does all start with aerodynamics at highway speeds. These schedules that you saw at the show were scheduled to be done in March, April. Uh, my ask as of four months ago was, can we do in January? <laughs> We're hoping to deliver the first vehicles by the end of the year. Tucked all the way in the back was this drivable test mule Aptera, and the whole point of this thing is to test the production-ready powertrain on the road. 
So you'll see it looks a little bit sparse versus the other one that we sat in earlier. And overall, the after party was super cool. I met some awesome future Aptera owners there. It was definitely worth going to. So a lucky couple of people managed to get test drives and they're going around right now in this parking lot. Now, as a side note, the headlight isn't actually as blinding as it comes across in the video. I mean, it looks like a supernova, but also I couldn't really hear any electric motor noise. And that's probably because they're not using a hub motor anymore. But seeing this thing moving around at night, I mean, it's really cool. And it started to get me thinking, how would light reflect off it if it was more glossy wrap? Anyway, tomorrow we're heading over to San Bernardino for some rare Honda Insight parts, and then it's all the way back to Canada, completing an over 5,000 kilometer round trip. So if you haven't already, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.